So in this video, we're going to take a quick look at the Vault Transform Engine, which was released in Vault 1.4 Enterprise. And we're going to take a look at how we can look at a very simple transform for credit card number and how we can use that within our application code. And we're going to do a couple of little examples with Vault, uh, Go and with Vault and Java. So the concept behind this transform engine is that you can encrypt data or you convert it into ciphertext, but you preserve the formatting. So for example, in our example here, we're going to have this credit card number. What we want to do is convert this credit card number into ciphertext. But we want to retain the first six digits of the number as plain. We don't want to encrypt those first six digits because they're just relating to the issuer and the bank and the card type. We want to be able to search on that information in our data store. So we can use the transform engine to do this because we can define these patterns or transforms which take into account the specific structure of our data. So a transform works like this. What you do is you define and specify this regular expression. So the regular expression here corresponds to that card number. Now, if you look at the regular expression, you'll see that there are capture groups. Now, it's only the capture groups which are encrypted or converted to ciphertext. Everything outside of the, uh, the capture group is left alone. So that means that we could give a credit card number like this, and we could have an output like this. And that's kind of satisfying our criteria. We can then safely store this in the database. We can still make this sort of searchable to do any analytics we want to do on that, such as how many outstanding or payments have we had from an Amex card? So the first thing I do is enable the secrets engine. So other than the built-in key value and the cubbyhole, Secrets Engines are not enabled by default in Vault. You need to be using the Vault Enterprise 1.4 or above for Transform to work. You can get an evaluation of Vault Enterprise from either releases at HashiCorp or you can just use the Docker container. So we need to configure a number of different things in order for this to work. We need to be able to configure a role, a transformation, a template, and an alphabet. So a role is that kind of basic high level construct. It's a thing that maps the user's permissions to a particular thing. And in this instance, that's a transformation. The transformation holds the information and the configuration about how this cryptographic process will work. And then we have the template. And the template is the thing like the regular expression, which controls what data should be encrypted, what data shouldn't, what would the kind of the input and the outputs be like. A transformation uses an alphabet, and an alphabet defines the characters which are used in the outputted ciphertext. And you can control that yourself. There are a number of built-in templates and alphabets which you can use, but we'll see how it's easy enough to write your own. So the first thing is to define the role. So I'm going to write this role here, and I'm writing it to transform role payments. The transformation I need to do is I'm going to say that this role has access to these transformations. And this is just this one, CCNFP. I haven't created that yet. I'm going to just create that now. So the transformation looks like this. I'm going to just do vault write transform transformation CCNFP. The type, now I can either do a type of FPE for format preserving encryption, which uses the FF3-1 algorithm, or I can use masking. And masking is the process which is one way. It'll convert to ciphertext, but you can't reverse the process. Now the tweak source, the tweak source is, I suppose if you think about, it's kind of like a salt in terms of if you were just hashing something, but it's a, an internal mechanism used by the algorithm which affects the, the encryption process. So a tweak source of internal means that Vault is going to generate and store this tweak for you. If you use a tweak source of generated, Vault will generate the tweak source, but it will give it back to you for you to store in your database, or it'll allow you to provide your own tweak source, and then you're responsible for generating and storing. If you use a tweak source of internal, you'll see in the demo that the same input will result in the same output. So that's entirely up to you on what the level of encryption you want and what you want to do with the data to be able to configure that. So I'm doing that, I'm setting that up there. So I have type FPE, tweak source internal, the template, I'm going to define that next. We're going to define our own credit card number template, and the allowed roles of payment. This allows me to have a separation between the people who are creating the transforms 
and those who are configuring the roles. So let's take a look at the template now. So the template is defined like this. Again, I'm just using the Vault CLI, Vault Write Transform Template, and then the name of the template, which is going to be CCN. I'm specifying that the type is regular expression. Now, regular expression is the only supported type for a transform right now, but we're putting provision in to allow that to be expanded at a later date. For a regular expression, I define my pattern. So look at this pattern here. What I'm defining is a very simple regular expression. So I'm saying any digit, a number between 0 and 9, and four of those, so I'm specifying with the curly brackets that it's a group of four, then a dash, then a dash D, another digit, two digits this time, and then I start to specify a capture group. So when we look back again at that transformation, if we take this pattern, given an input of a credit card number like this, the output is going to be the credit card number converted to ciphertext with the exception of the first six digits. And that's because they're not specified within a capture group. The alphabet, I'm using my own alphabet that I'm going to create called numerics, but I could use a built-in alphabet such as lowercase characters, uppercase characters, etc. Let's take a look at this now. Just that alphabet to define. So I'm doing vault right, transform, alphabet, and then the name, which is numerics. The alphabet I specify just whichever characters I want to be included in the outputted south for text. And I'm just using 0 to 9. I could use emoji. I could use UTF-8 character sets if I want to do a specific language or something like that. It's very, very flexible. Let's just write that. And then that's the setup done. So the next thing that we can do is we can test our transform. So testing the transform. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, again, the CLI. And I'm doing this vault right. And I'm saying transform. I want to use the transform engine. I want to do an encode operation. And I want to use the payments transform. Now, the value is the value that I want to convert to ciphertext. So again, I've just got this fake credit card number here, which is in the correct format. When I write that and commit it, you'll see that the, transfer, the ciphertext that's returned is 111-22. And that's exactly the same as the input because of my transform was ignoring the first six digits. The final digits, the final 10 digits there, are actually all converted to ciphertext. If I run that operation again, you'll see I get the same value back, and that's because I was using that tweak source of internal. Now to decode, we can reverse the operation because we're using that two-way encryption. So I can do vault write, transform, decode, payments, and then let me just grab my value there, and I'm just going to paste that in there. You can see the decoded value is returning me originally what I had specified. So it's that two-way encryption. So that's how you configure transform using the CLI. But let's have a look at how we can set this up inside of our application. So I want to take a look at Java. And Java is going to be the first thing we look at. And we can see just how easy it is to write a simple integration from Java. Now, I could have used the Spring Boot integration for Vault. I could have used a number of different sort of clients. But I decided I just want to show you the very pure, simple way of using the API. So I've created this class, which is my Vault client. And the only thing it has is a token and a URI. The token is my Vault token that I want to use. And that's going to give me permission to access particular transforms. And the URI is the location of my Vault server. I have a function here which is is OK, and all this does is health checks Vault. So let's take a look at how we do that with the Vault API. So what I do is I'm defining a new URL, and I'm specifying my Vault A URI and the path v1 sys health. So that's Vault's API path for health checks. I then create a new HTTP URL connection, set the method as get. And then importantly, what I'm doing is I'm adding my vault token to a header called X vault token. And then I can just submit that request and get the response code back. If I get a 200, vault's healthy. If not, I don't. So that's a very simple way that you can see how from Java you can 
leverage the Vault API. But what about that tokenization? So tokenization is a little bit different because we do need to send some data. The data we need to send is this. It's a JSON formatted request. It's very, very straightforward and just has a value. From Java, what we can do is we can use the faster XML Jackson JSON library to be able to convert POJOs into JSON requests. And I do this just by defining a very, very simple class in Java here. You can see that all it has is a getter and setter for value because that's all my request contains. What I then do is I'm just going to convert that into an array of bytes. So I'm using the, the faster XML to be able to do that. I then start to construct my request. And in the same way as I set up the request for the health check, I'm doing a very, very simple HTTP post to v1 transform encode payment. So payment being the name of the transform that I want to use and v1 transform the engine, encode the operation. Simple thing, HTTP URL connection, post, telling it that I'm sending application JSON that I want application JSON back. And again, I'm setting that vault token. I then write the request, and anybody who's familiar with processing JSON in Java should be pretty straightforward for you. And then I get the response. The response comes back and it looks like this. So it's a JSON object which contains this data element, and this data element contains this encoded value. So if we look at this in terms of our faster XML JSON POJO, it looks like this. It's pretty straightforward. And that's literally all we need to do in order to make a request from, from Java to Vault. It's very, very simple, very, very simple objects. But what about Go? Well, let's take a look at how we can do the same thing using Go. So in Go, what I've done is I've defined this very simple structure, which is going to be my Vault client. Again, there is a fully featured SDK for Vault, but just want to show you how simple it is to interact with the API. I'm going to define again those request and response objects. In Go, I can use the encoding JSON package, which allows me to add annotations to struts. So my token request would be converted to our JSON payload, and then again, the response from our JSON payload. I'm setting the token and the URI for the Vault server. And then let's again look at how we would do that a simple health check. So I'm constructing my URL that is comprised of the Vault server address and then the API endpoint v1 sys health. I'm adding my Vault token into the header x Vault token. And then I'm just doing my default client and I'm just sending that get request. I get the response. If the response is HTTP 200, okay, Vault's healthy. Then we can go on. So the tokenization. So again, tokenization starts with taking that vault. So tokenization. So tokenization starts by constructing a token request strut. So I'm creating that and I'm adding my credit card number into it. I then use JSON Marshall to convert that into JSON. I'm going to do an HTTP post to the URI vault server v1 transform encode payment. So exactly the same way as I did it in Java there. I'm setting my payload which is my, my token request. And again, most importantly, adding that vault token to the header. The token must have permission to be able to perform this operation. We can then submit that to the vault server and read the response. The response, the same way as Java, is going to be contained in a token response, which is going to have a data element. And then inside the data element, we have the encoded value containing our cipher text. Really, really, really easy. Just in total, this entire class is only, what, 83 lines of code. And I hope you can see that it's pretty powerful as well. And that's it. That's the, the new Transform Secret Engine. All of the source code we'll put in the link below, so you can go and play around with this. The example code in the repo does have a full service around it, so you can see just exactly this built into a Spring Boot service, or in Go, with just a simple Go microservice. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or any comments, please reach out. We would be more than happy to speak with you.